should I do first? I don't know what to do first because uh, this is National Kidney Month and they first they invited me to the public school. Now you know how important that is to me because you got children that's having uh, diabetes and overweight and different issues and being on dialysis. So I'm glad to be going to the public school. I'm glad to be going to the rehab. I'm glad to be going to the colleges, oh my goodness, all through the community, just to bring kidney awareness. I don't just do this once a month. I do it all the time. But I know this lady that do it all the time. When I say all the time, this girl does it like 1,000. And I think I'm going to call her because this is the Lisa Baxter Show, giving you the 411 in the kidney world. Hey, how is everybody's doing? I hope you're doing well. Happy Sunday, happy March, happy new month. And I am glad that you tuned into the Lisa Baxter show. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I have a beautiful, fantabulous guest for you. Oh man, let me tell you, let me tell you. I have this wonderful woman, hardworking woman. Okay, that works for the Board of Education. That's right, the Board of Education in the public school system. She is a parent coordinator, and her name is Greta Nathaniel. Welcome, Greta, to the Lisa Baxter Show. Hi, Greta. Well, thank you so much. I feel oh, good. you're welcome. You are so, so welcome. Uh, I am so glad to have you on the show because I wanted to get you for a long time because you and I have been working together for a good minute, uh, been friends for a second, and, and, and what have you. So um, I want to introduce you to so many people out here in the kidney world because um, for one reason that you work hard to help me to spread kidney awareness bringing it to your school. So I did appreciate that. You've had me to your school more than once. But before we jump into that, we're going to jump into what, what is a parent coordinator? I didn't hear what you said, Lisa, I'm sorry. What is a parent coordinator? Your a job. A parent coordinator is a person that works in New York City public school system. Mm -hmm. And they are the liaison or the, the um, ombudsman. They're the person that people can go to. But you have to work with everyone from custodians to parents to students, administrative staff, anyone that comes through the building. You have mm -hmm. to make them welcome. You have to let them know that they're important. And whatever they come to talk to you about, most of all, you have to listen. You don't have to have the solution, but you must respect and treat them. Hmm. Now that sounds like a good job. How long have you had this job? Uh, about, I've been doing this particular job since 2008, mm -hmm. but I've been in the Board of Ed since 1990. Wow, wow. Okay, I know that has to be a challenge, working with young people, even though we love them, and working with people together. You know, when you work for uh, the public, you do have to be and act a certain way to work with the public. Right? I, I didn't hear you, Lisa. I'm sorry. Something's wrong? Do we need to clock in and clock back out? 
Because I know you 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 sounding a little, you know, wavy, but I can hear you. So I don't know what's going on, but we're gonna we're gonna keep trying. I'll try to talk a little it's louder. I can up. be loud. I'm breaking up already. Wow, that was quick. All right, how about now? Do I sound any better? What is it that um choppy? I'm I'm sounding choppy. Okay. Well, maybe you need to come out, go out, and come back in. Maybe that'll do it. I'm not sure. I don't have any instructions on what to do. This is a live show, so that's the way it. You know, that's the way we try until we get it right. But I'll keep talking until you come back on. So come out and come back in, and we'll do that because I don't see any okay, instructions so ready. Come back. Yeah. In. Yeah. And see what happens. Okay. All right. All right. Now, well, anyway, I don't know if, what you know about the Board of Education, but when you're a parent coordinator, a lot of times you have to uh, organize workshops for uh, the parents of the children. So you have to plan something, you know, for the PTA. You have to plan something uh, for the whole year for the, the school. So you have to have health fairs and, and street fairs and, and what have you for the children and career day. So I've been uh, with Greta for career day. I've been there to talk to her parents and to the uh, families where she worked. And I really had a blast talking with them and to them. I explained, um, I had to do a, a conversation and a talk and a speech about kidney disease and and kidney failure and even my walk and my journey with kidney disease and kidney failure and, and stuff. And even a little bit with the transplant because I did it before I got the transplant more than I did it when after. So um, that was one of the things that I had to do at her particular school. And she has middle, she has uh, young and middle-aged children uh, at that particular school. But um, I was I was really happy to have went to the school because a lot of them didn't know about kidney disease. A lot of them didn't understand or know about dialysis. But once I got to talking, some of them could identify a new family member or a friend that dealt with this type or this kind of sickness. So I was glad to be able to go someplace different, someplace else. I didn't just want to go to a dialysis center to talk. Because even though they and and we all needed people uh, with different experience and same experience as us, sometimes the caregiver or the other person that you might not think need this will actually need this. Oh, Greta's back. Greta? Hi there. Yes, all it's right. me. Oh, hallelujah. You sound nice and clear now. So yeah, I, would I didn't give up. <laughs> okay, I'm glad you didn't. I'm glad you didn't because they have to hear. I was telling them about the different workshops that you um, orchestrate um, for the families, the parents, and the youth there. You know, the career days and the um, the health fairs and stuff like that. Give them a little bit of that. Tell, talk a little bit about that for me, please. Well, um, I'm in an area in um, Queens, um, Hollis, Queens, and um, the, 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 re the area, the community is residential. However, um, you know, a lot of the people seem like in the last couple of years, you know, they, they move in and out because, you know, uh, a lot of them are from um, Haiti or Africa or the West Indies or Chinese we have. So what it is is that um, everything has gotten so expensive now that the school has a lot of people moving, coming in and out. So what I do is okay. I make sure that um, I can service the community with glasses, I'll have a, a company come in and do one day of just doing glasses. I have a company that come in, these are school-based organizations that I reach out to, and they'll come in and do dental work. I'll have Con Ed come in and they'll give the kids kits. Um, and I'll do evening workshop with the parents so that anything that can help them understand the curriculum for middle school 
uh, like ELA and math. I'll make sure that they have workshops on that. Um, when I did the health fair, um, I was fortunate enough to have like 30 companies show up in our um, in our yard, and we did a beautiful, beautiful health fair. The children was loaded down with all kinds of things concerning health. Um, we even had a physical exercise lady come in and do Zumba. So anything that was related to health, we orchestrated that. I had a, um, um, the the um, school in Manhattan. I even went to them, reached out to them, and they gave me a lot of supplies for students. Um, to brush their teeth, to floss their teeth. So whatever I can do to help the community, that's what I do. Um, Thanksgiving, we, my the church that I go to, we always give turkeys to the families at the school. Not only mm -hmm. just a turkey, we give a full Thanksgiving uh, meal that they can Excellent. go home and cook. Uh -huh. and then we let them know where the hot dish is if they can't cook, they can come and sit down to a hot meal. Wow. Wow. All right. Now that sounds good. Mm. I can almost smell that turkey. Cut it out. You know, so um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, I had the chance to be at your health fair and um, some of the workshops and stuff that you've had down the years. And I mean, it really was excellent. And I, I like the fact that the kids were involved and the kids enjoyed it. And the people that came was glad that they were came, came to be able to give a service to that community and to the school. Yes, it was really blessed because I really loved helping people. I see that. And I know that. Matter of fact, that's one of how I had met you. Um, I had wrote um, through the eyes of a dialysis patient and um, you had invited me to the school um, because your father was on, uh, was uh, had kidney failure, was on dialysis. So you had me come to the school and I mean, this was so many years ago and we've been close and friends ever since. So that got the ball rolling. That's what brought us together. If you remember that, I don't know if you remember that, but that's what brought us together. We were talking about that before. Yeah, I remember it. I remember it. Uh, it really uh, struck a note because um, and um, he was a Christian, and I remember him um, before he passed away, you know, the different changes that he went through. Um, and um, he was on it for a while, but he had a pacemaker. So yes. they said that um, he died on the table because uh, his heart was weak. So I imagine that if your blood is changed every three days, that that's wear and tear on the body. Yeah, three times a week, so yeah, dial. Yes. Wow. Well, yeah, that weakens that that could weaken the heart. Um, did you ever uh, see him before? I mean, after he came from dialysis, or seen him on the machine at any point? Yes, 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 I did. Um, he was he was weak. He was you know, weak. Um, he needed, you know. Uh huh. Yes. And um, so, yeah. Yeah, I I saw him after he would come off the dialysis machine. Yes. Okay. Was he it's home? Not, was it was, tired? It's not. Hmm? Yeah, he he would go home. He would go home. Was he hungry or tired? It was. Huh? Was he hungry or tired or? Yeah, he was tired. He'd get some need and go lay down. And that was it. Yeah. Okay. Apparently he must have had it in the evening. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. It can take a lot out of you. And with dialysis, you have to listen to all the rules of of what they tell you to do and listen to even listen to your body. You know what I mean? You had to eat on time, not too much fluid on the body. Had, you know, 
fluid, you know, we have to have the, the, the right amount taken off, you know what I mean? Watch the potassium and stuff like that. And you had to get rest and stuff. And, you know, sometimes people had a hard time conforming to dialysis, not saying your dad, but I know speaking personally, right. a lot of people have a hard time with it at first because they, they are shocked or can't believe it. But the symptoms in the body tells a lot of stuff. You know, regardless of what you believe or what you feel or think half the time, you know. But um, before he was on it, did you know anything about dialysis before your father was on it? No. Um, before I met you, I didn't know too much about it. Um, but what touched me was that here you were on dialysis and you were a person to me that was winning, not losing. I wow. to me it it my like he wasn't doing too well with it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it struck a chord with me. This is why I read your book. This is why I want to do a workshop at the school. What I want to bring the awareness to the school, to the school communities, so that they would have the information themselves because um person that is success with the dialysis, you know. And then once I got, you let me know that it was something that, that you know, was in the family and things like that. So like you said, uh, you have to educate yourself. You have to follow instructions. You have to, you know, do what you need to do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know it's it's a hard what pill. Did, you know. I still yeah. miss him, though. <laughs> he didn't listen? Hmm? Did you say you didn't? What'd you say? Did he didn't listen? You said? I said I still. Huh? Oh, you chopping up too, so I I understand. Your father, but he listened, even though he was weak. He listened about dialysis, right? As far as I know, yeah. As far as you know, okay, yeah. okay, all right. Well, at least you took something away from the table. At least you was able to be observant about it or care enough to bring it to the school, care enough to bring it to the families that you serve. And, you know, did anybody else in your family know anything about dialysis or had any um, firsthand experience with it you know of? He was the only one that I know of. Oh, he was the only one. Anybody else in, in the family know yeah. anything about dialysis that you know of? No, no one else that I know of. Oh, okay. All right. All right. No one and that can happen too. A lot of times you don't experience nothing until it hit home. You know what I mean? Right. You know, so it comes to your house or visit your area. And then, you know, you know, because sometimes you say, well, this doesn't bother me or this doesn't concern me or this is not touching my family. And then, um, God forbid, when it touch your family, you want the book, the encyclopedia. You want the rundown. You want the surgeon, the doctor. I got more fingers if I had to have some more. You know what I mean? So you want everything and everybody, you know, to help you with it and through it. And that's natural because you don't want to be struck with it. But um, so once you. That's so how did your faith help you to deal with your your own things you deal with and, and even dealing with um the what your father had to deal with? if it's all right to say. By me getting the knowledge and information and then knowing someone that, you know, through it, uh -huh. it helped me to, to better educate myself, to change some of my, you know, my eating habits, my, you know, um, make sure that I hydrate enough, mm -hmm. make sure that I'm just not sedentary, I'm not just sitting around all the time and make sure that what I eat is, is wholesome food and uh because uh, our mouth we cook very good uh -huh. but our food is rich you know what i'm saying so i started learning different other ways i could prepare you know yeah that's good you know you do in this you got to change your eating habits you know no matter what illness you're dealing with it's good to to eat better and feel better. You know, sometimes when you do something, I hate to say it, but I'm just going to tell the truth. <clears throat> sometimes when you want to eat something you're not supposed to eat or wrong, 
if you're going to do something like that, which <laughs> you at, at least should have a good report card or it should be a treat or something you do sell, not, you know, not all the time that you would do it once in a while. It would be, you know, an, a, re a reward or something to you or just something because you wanted to have it. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's going to be like that in life. I just always say, I don't drink, I don't smoke, but give me my cake, you know, or something. But if I if I had a bad report card, I didn't eat what I wasn't supposed to eat. I had a good one. I ate stuff when I could and, and, and wanted to half the time. You know what I mean? So I, I'll be honest and I'll be fair. And I never lied about that. But I did like to eat healthy and do the right thing, you know, because I already had my experience as a terrible or bad eater. Uh, and I had my time with that. So, you know, I learned, you know what I mean? But always active, always running, always going. And I see that you do you do a lot of health healthy things and for yourself and you share it with your family and you fit, share it with your church, your faith, and you share it with, you know, the job. So um, how does your faith help you with these things, Miss Greta? By me just having the relationship through prayer with Christ, reading his word, and and putting it in my everyday, letting it be a lifestyle, basically. Mm. You know, um, if you, you can say things, but if you don't do it, what good is it? You know what I'm saying? The word says that be a hearer, but also be a doer of the word. That's in James, you know? Yes. So if we say that we believe something, but we don't do it, then that's that's not living the full that Christ would have you to live. And then once you get knowledge and understanding, you and you don't apply it, yes. you're the one that's going to miss out. You know? Wow. Because faith is... It, Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And then it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. So these are things that you have to put into practice. You can you, you can say, I believe, but if you don't do it, then you have to back it up with, with, with a lifestyle. Yeah, you need action. You definitely, you ain't never lied. I ain't mad at you. I am not mad at you. You know, you're right over there. You know, because, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do 12 years of dialysis if I didn't believe God that would he heal me in whatever way he say, saw fit to heal me. Whether it be through a transplant or whether the kidneys would start working or what have you, because I was told that in the past the kidneys could start working. So I, I believe God. And I every year, every year I would keep asking. And they keep saying, why you keep asking me um, how your kidney is doing? You know, you know, you got polycystic kidney. Da, 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 da. I said, because one of these days you're going to tell me I don't need it. And that's faith and putting faith to action. Or well, I would have just gave up a long time ago. But believe it or not, I did well on dialysis. I had my ups and downs with low blood pressure. But I, I uh, followed the rules. You know what I'm saying? And I, you know, I was doing well on it. If I, you know, God forbid, if I didn't have the transplant, I, at least I was able to, to um, live on this along with my siblings that lived on this as well. All six of them. Okay. So, wow. Let me see now. If you had to talk to another parent coordinator that maybe don't know anything about kidney awareness or don't know anything of how to get these things rolling and started for their schools, what would you say to them to, to encourage them on this? Hmm? You Can you hear me? So bad. I'm sorry. Okay. You're breaking up. What would you what would you say to another coordinator? You. Can you hear me now? What would I say? What would you say to a coordinator that needed to yeah. bring kidney awareness? What would you say to convince her to bring kidney awareness to her school? Her school needs it. I know it and you know it, but what would you say to her? What would I say to bring kidney awareness to your to my school? No, you already have it in your yeah. school. What would you say? Yeah, what would you say to a coordinator to bring it to hers? How would you convince her? 
or encourage I would, her? Would tell them, I would tell them about the experience that I had during my workshop. Yeah. I would tell them about the health fair, and I would tell them how people ordered a, the book. I would let the evidence show for themselves. And then I would have pictures to show. Because, you know, pictures are a thousand words, you know. It is. And I would I, encourage them, this, this is a great topic. This is something that is not talked about a lot. We have them all over Queens. I mean, sometimes there's so many dialysis um, centers all over Queens. It's ridiculous. Yes. But we don't want to wait till it's too late and you have to go in and, and be a patient. Right. We need to get. Mm. That's true. That is so true. Mm. That's a, now that's good. That's good. I'm not mad at you. That's good. You they they have to get it out there. We trying everything to get it out there. And I've been going all over the place for years and so many others. Now, who would you give a shout out to if you could give somebody a shout out before I end the show? See how fast it went. Ha ha. Is there any you? Is there anybody you would like to give a shout out to? <laughs> yes, I would like to give a shout out to um, my family, um, Abigail, Naomi, Jessica, Jason, my my lovely grandchildren. So, hi y'all. How you doing? <laughs> Oh, right. I like that kind of shout out. The family shout out. Is there anything we missed or anything you'd like to add or say? Is there anything you would like to say at all? Anything of your own uh, struggle or per personal anything or anything educated, educational? Whatever, um, you, do, hmm? whatever you do, for people, God will take care of what you need him to take care of. Wow. You know, when I go to um, school and I help people, I think about things that I can't change myself that's going on in my life. Yes. And I live, I, live, I, I uh, help people in any way I can, you know. I do that, I'm doing it unto God. But before I do that, I pray every morning Amen. and ask God to, to be seen in me. Amen. 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 It works in the school, it works in Rackers Island, it works on it at home. In it your community, that's right. You that's right. That's right. You're a community person. You're a community person, and you know your community. I love that about you, too, Greta. Well, um, I I appreciate having you on the show. I appreciate you letting me come to your school all of these years, um, doing workshop with the parents. You have me doing the arts and crafts as well, you know, the job readiness, all the kind of stuff. We did exercise, walking off the pounds, kidney awareness, you name it. We've done it. You know, and I even do a little driver's aid. How about that? So thank you for being a blessing. Thank you for be, uh, partnering and networking with me to educate others in this type of journey. And um, have an excellent night. Keep doing what you're doing. I'll see you at your school soon. How about that? And thank you so much. I enjoy being a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. You have a fantabulous night. Much love and a million blessings. Shout out to your family thank as well. You. And your school, thank too, you. for um, always being a help. Thank you. Good night. Well, guys, you heard it. I know it had a little yin, yin, yin going on, but the truth is the light. The fact is that that uh, kidney awareness is being spread. And even though it's Kidney Awareness Month, you do something to spread kidney awareness. Take it where it needs to go, wherever you at, wherever you work, wherever you volunteer, visit, pray at, or work. 
bring kidney awareness with you. Let somebody know. Each one, reach one, teach one. How about that? I ain't mad at you. Much love, much peace. Thank you for uh, listening in, and I'll see you next week with another wonderful guest. Mwah. This is the Lisa That's the show Giving you the One, one, one And it can be one This is